All right, Chad, man, September 10th, UFC 279, Las Vegas. Haley Alatang is going to be your opponent. But before we get into him, let's talk about, you know, the excitement of being on a big pay-per-view on your second UFC fight. That's that's pretty good. You know, I mean, of course you want it on your first one, but, you know, you take it as you can get it, right? Yeah, honestly, it feels totally new, man. Like, mm -hmm. um, I had the Contender Series fight. It was awesome. You know, it was at the Apex that I had my... Debut is at the Apex. I was already kind of comfortable there. And it's still, you know, the UFC in the Apex mm -hmm. is different than Contender Series in the Apex. So it felt cool. But this feels like, man, I got, like, jitters thinking about the fight and the fans. And, and uh, it feels different. I'm really excited for it. And, you know, I had to spend a lot of time at, like, the, you know, I don't know what you call it, the COVID hotel at the UFC. And it just... It took away from the experience and you know they're putting us up in a good hotel to be fans around and i'm just you know i'm, I'm really excited it, it uh it gets me going and i'm a type of fighter that feeds off that you know like uh i, I love the energy of the crowd and i know it's gonna put on an awesome fight for him during a fight week i'm not saying a ufc fight week but any fight week and and you know you're at the fighter hotel you're doing your thing for the week and and you run into fans you run into people that recognize you it must give you some kind of energy right that that there's that positivity oh, coming yeah 100 percent, man 100 percent. because i mean in my experience anyway maybe some people have had different but it's always positive you know like no fans gonna get right in your face and tell you you suck because you're a ufc fighter you'll probably beat their ass but uh it, it's all positive the fans are pumped they love seeing you and you just it's a different life you know fight week you you are you know, a superstar, uh, when regular life, I mean, it's not like I'm getting stopped on the streets. So it's a, it's a fun week. I, I soak it up, man. I, I, I love it. I, I want all the action I can get on fight week. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's that UFC bubble, right? The, the bubble that they create and, and you got to go into that bubble and, and take advantage of it as best as you can. You get your chance. Mm -hmm. Alatang or Haley Alatang. He's coming off a, a pretty, pretty quick knockout of Kevin Kroom. You know, what did you think of that fight? Did you feel, did you think like before that fight even started that it would end that way? Uh, you know, actually I didn't. Um, I actually thought that Kroom was, uh, I kind of had my eye on him. I thought he was fairly good and I thought we'd maybe end up fighting. I didn't really have my attention on, on Alatang, but uh, as soon as he got the win, I did, uh, the knockout. But he, he's super powerful, athletic. He really knows how to use it. Um, I don't think there's like really deep levels to his striking game, but um, he really knows how to make it work for him. Um, so that matchup, you know, when you look at it in a retrospect, it, that's probably how it was going to go. Uh, Kroom's a little stiff, a little tall, and Alatang is fast and powerful, and he, and he got him. So, you know, props to him on that win, but that's not going to happen to me. Yeah, when you look at that fight, there's not too much to dissect, so you got to go back a couple other fights, which is the Gustavo Lopez fight and the Casey Kenny fight, which both fights were uh, give both fights give you a lot of material, right? A lot of footage. What did you think of those performances? You know, what were you able to get out of those? Man, it's still a hard read um, because you know you don't really know you don't really know what he wants to do in there uh, if he's dictating some of these decisions or if it's dictated from his opponent the wrestling and then the lack of wrestling it's really hard to get a read on because he's obviously has skilled wrestling but it's not really translating very well for him in the ufc and i don't know if that's because he's knocking people out i mean it's pretty hard to to, to criticize a guy for not wrestling when he when he's getting some knockouts and, and he does get knockdowns and he i think he rocked both those fighters um in those fights so yeah i really don't know i don't know what to expect out of him um I do think that I can dictate the the pace and where the fight's going to happen. So, you know, I feel like I'm in a little bit more control of it. I feel like he kind of just goes with the flow a little bit. Um, and I'm kind of hoping to use that. But, yeah, I don't have a great read on him, to be honest. I know he's got a lot of fights, and he's even had a lot of fights in the UFC, but I still don't totally know his game. So we'll, we'll, we'll find out when we get in there. I'm excited for this matchup, man. Let's switch gears and talk about you. You made your debut earlier this year, got a third-round TKO finish. But – not without some adversity. Looking back, man, what did you take away from from the fight? You know, I just I, it was really important to get my feet wet and get the cage under me, get, get some UFC time, get some cage time. Uh, I didn't love my fight though. I didn't love my performance. Um, you know, I was a little gun shy and um, straighter. Actually, caught me off guard a lot in the fight. I really didn't expect him to come out in that self pause stance and throw that kick so much, uh, and it just kind of. I had a hard time getting my rhythm going because he was um, more resilient than I thought. He didn't get as tired as I thought. He added in some wrestling, and um, 
Yeah, it, it was kind of a, an eye opener that uh, I don't want to be too set in game plans and and how it's going to go because you do have to feel it out a little bit. And, and he kind of had me caught in a spot where I it's not like I was losing the fight or he was totally taking over, but I couldn't get my game going like I want. Uh, so I do plan on being more aggressive and, and making sure I'm establishing my game uh, because you know I, I know I belong. I know I'm uh, as good as these guys. So um, it was it was nice to kind of get that extra bit of confidence getting a win in my debut there's a lot of pressure there to get the win Mm -hmm. Uh, but now that I have that in my back pocket you know I just feel like I can really let it all hang out and and put on a great fight yeah you said that you struggled to get your rhythm going and you know in a position that you're in you're debuting for one of the biggest promotions in the world inside the apex where you already won so you do have a little bit of pressure in that panic could creep in but it didn't creep in you went into the third round and, and got it done man how does it feel to just turn things around like that yeah, it felt great. You know, um, I was almost getting frustrated at myself uh, during the fight, but, you know, I kind of just need to let what I do happen. You know, I, I always finish these guys. I always find a way to win. It's not going to change, even if it doesn't start great. I've had lots of fights that didn't start great. You know, I have a lot of confidence in my power um, from the first minute of the fight to the last minute of the fight. So, you know, even in between rounds when I'm coming out for a third round or something like that, you'll never see me do- feeling down and out even if i was getting dominated i know i could come out to, it's a new fight we're starting touch gloves for the third round and i know i can still beat these guys so i got a lot of confidence in my skills and um i'm just don't plan on letting it hang around that long this time i don't want it to be this close i, I want to just beat this guy up get him out of there seven months between fights man we expected you back sooner but uh now we're here well, you know what was going on yeah a little bit of everything um i was pretty banged up actually from the fight um i went in pretty banged up too i had some meniscus problems in my knee i heard it like first week of training camp and i just you know taped it up and trained right through because uh, it wasn't anything too debilitating but um i didn't want to pull out i just i wanted that fight i liked the matchup and i don't want to be this guy that pulls out of fights i mean it's the ufc i uh, i uh, i signed a contract i've said i'm going to be there so i'm going to be there so i forced it a lot and then in the fight I took a lot of damage too. I took a lot of kicks and my leg was banged up and my arm was banged up and I'm a, I'm a big uh, believer in fully recovering from fights. So it took a while. It, it took a couple months before all the lumps and bruises actually fully went away. Uh, and I rehabbed my knee until it was feeling great again. And then, you know, now I was ready to rock, but it just took time, you know, and I, I don't, I, I didn't, there was no need to rush it. So. All right. Training camp, most likely at champions creed. What other spots uh, do you frequent for training camp? Yeah, I have a little bit of moving around, but most everything happens at Champions Creed. Um, you know, only because of some timing reasons. I, I have some other coaches I work with. Uh, Paul Sukes, uh, he runs the Muay Thai program at uh, Silverback Martial Arts here here in Calgary. He's been an awesome coach. Uh, he puts me through hell on, on the Muay Thai pads. Uh, I've been working with a boxing coach. Um, I've been working uh, Mike Smallwood, the boxing coach. And he, he's out of uh, Dynamite Boxing. And these guys have been really open to, to working with me because I just got a tough schedule, you know, like I'm training in the evening and then I got odd bits of work here and there. And um, they're very flexible and they can meet me during the day. So I've uh, taken full advantage because I got a lot of support in the city. And these are guys I've known in the industry for a long time and, and they want to see me succeed. So it, it's been fun. I'm getting lots of good work in. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, you know, a lot of fighters, when they reach the UFC, they start adding things in, you know, because they're getting paid a little bit more, you know, more money, more you know, income mm-hmm. to spend on yourself, invest in yourself. Anything new you added to, you know, your routine, like diet or something, you know what I mean? Mental coach, something. Is there anything new? Not really. Everything just kind of got leveled up a little bit. Um, I did actually take my food to kind of a new level. Uh, I use a company called Dedicate. Um, they do all my meal prep and stuff like that. And and uh, it's the most disciplined I've been on that ever. So uh, I, and I can feel the benefits, man. I got lots of energy. I'm getting like today I, I've had four training sessions today. So uh, I got lots of energy. I'm going hard. Um, so that's been a kind of a bit of a game changer for me. And then I just I'm not training, you know, for fun. I don't go to the classes, really. Uh, I go to these coaches. We have set times and they don't let me off the hook and they make me work hard and they know that small details are important. Uh, same with my jujitsu coach, my head coach, Brian Bird. When I go and meet up for jiu-jitsu, we actually handpick a bunch of guys, and then we meet, and we roll, and we do our work, and he's standing, feels like an inch away from me the whole time as we're rolling, and giving me details, and telling me what not to do, and redo it if it wasn't right, so uh, yeah, the training, 
I, I took away any of the things that was fun. It's all coaches on me, making me as best as I can be, and uh, it's going to show for sure. Yeah, man, sounds like a, a straight up professional camp right there. You know what I mean? No, no outsiders. Um, you, yeah. you know, think speaking of no outsiders, your teammate Hakeem, he's also competing at UFC 278. What has that magnified the moment for the team? Has this for the team and the coaches? This, uh, this, you guys fighting together on the same night? It feels so good to give that to the team, and it, for me and Hakeem, it makes no difference. I mean, we we're on our own pass, and like obviously yeah. we're training partners, and we we want each other to win. But I mean, being on the same card, it just doesn't really change anything, you know. Like we're still doing what we got to do, but it feels feels really good to give that to Champions Creed, and uh, especially Brian Bird, our, our head coach. He's poured himself into uh, the fight team for so long, and he has it. We have such a good team, and we're finally starting to get some recognition. And this is, you know, a bit of a feather in the cap. Two fighters on one card it is kind of the first of many steps that's going to show, you know, how good our team is. I and mean, this is going to happen more and more. There's going to be Champions Creed fighters on all kinds of UFC cards. Yeah, definitely, man. You guys are just getting started, you know. <laughs> You're just getting started. Um, you know, you got your feet wet in the first fight. The second fight, man, everybody's, of course, going to expect something more spectacular, right? That's what the sport is about, is about getting doing better than what you did before right so what are you expecting out of yourself you know i just really want to uh assert my dominance you know i want to be aggressive i want to just run that cage um i don't want to be backing up i don't want my opponent to get any momentum going because he's super skilled too and i i feel like if i get him on the back foot and i can keep him there uh, until i eventually get him out of there or or uh, even if it takes 15 minutes of, of doing that i just want to win the whole fight start to finish um, like I didn't love how, how that last fight was going, uh, just stupid things. I feel like I could have done better. I should have won by more decide. And it sounds crazy. I knocked him out, but I should have been winning more. Uh, he should have not had the success he had. And, um, yeah, that, that is motivating for me after that fight to get in the gym and to be better. Um, yeah. So I, I plan on showing that, uh, uh, I, I really belong. You know, it seems crazy. I get in there, I get a win. I knock this guy out. And it's still like, oh, yeah, but he was just looking okay. It's like, uh, I got to put a stamp on it, you know? All right, man. I see I see the fire, man. I see the, the drive, man, even though you got to finish in your debut. Uh, one last question, man, before I let you go. Aljamain Sterling, TJ Dillashaw, they're going to be fighting for the Bantamweight title. You're going to be up there soon, eventually. What do you think of the – what do you think of just Dillashaw getting the title shot with the history and everything and even the fight that he had to earn the title shot? You know, I, I think Dillashaw's – a great fighter man i think he fights really hard he fights exciting i think he's still got all the talent in the world i actually think he's probably going to win the fight um you know it, it's hard to say you're just not in other people's situations and i don't always know everything about stories and things get twisted and it's kind of hard it, the only thing i can say is that like if you don't you have to have trust in the system and in the ufc and if the ufc is giving the guy the fights, giving him a title shot, they know more than I know about the whole situation or whether they're, if it's a drug testing thing and that they're testing them and they're, and they're feeling confident, then, then that's all I, I, you can ask for. You know, like uh, they're, they're professional and, you know, I respect cool. it if they're going to put him in there. I'm sure he's earned it and I know he's a good fighter. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's nothing to me. Sterling seems like he's always the underdog, even though he's the champion. And even in this fight as well, everybody's picking Dillashaw to win. How does Dillashaw beat TJ? You think TJ is going to win, but how does he beat TJ, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be in the grappling because I, I just don't see him getting it done on the striking. TJ moves too well. Um, but I don't know how great uh, TJ's jiu-jitsu is. So, I mean, there's a, there's a chance Sterling can, can catch him in the jiu-jitsu realm. The wrestling is going to make that difficult, but there's still an opportunity for him in the jiu-jitsu. And I think that's what um, Aljamain's seeing. I'm sure, like that, I'm sure he's seeing taking the back you know doing what he does um he can do that to anybody so uh yeah that the jiu-jitsu area is, is where there's a, an opportunity i think even though tj is a, a strike or a wrestler born wrestler he's you know he's known for his striking you know and 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 known for his power and probably lots of people are going to say that he has more power than sterling he has better striking than sterling you know with the wrestling how effective will it be do you think he'll even use it yeah, I mean, besides trying to defend takedowns, you know, uh, keeping it on the feet. But I don't know. Ster Sterling might, might might surprise you, too. Like, uh, he uses a lot of jiu-jitsu, but that's because he's had the ability to use it a lot. I think if he gets caught 
being stuck on his feet and, and having to be there. I'm sure he's got some some weapons there too. I mean, no, he's got he's got great kicks. Uh, I've known that for a long time. He doesn't use it all the time, but he he could surprise guys too with uh, with his kicks. So there's opportunity there too. I mean, he's just a great fighter. I mean, he's a world champion. Like the, the, the guy, you know, he he can, he can find ways to win. I'm sure. Do you think TJ knocks out Sterling, or do you feel like this fight's going to be 25 minutes? Yeah, that, that's tough. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I I have a lot of. Uh, you know, respect for TJ. I think I think he wins. I, I I think he can finish him. I think he could hurt him, get on top, and and he can finish. All right, man. September tenth, UFC two seventy nine, Las Vegas, T Mobile Arena, packed arena. Chad, appreciate the time, man. This is a fire matchup, dude. One of those like banger bantamweight fights. Like you're gonna, I think you're gonna probably end up being one of those guys that you know that everybody wants to see fight the top fifteen guys. You know what I mean? It's gonna happen. Yeah. So. Good luck on that's, everything, that's man. My style, man. I want this to be fun. I want to yeah. be scramble. I want us both to bleed. I want us both to be wobbled. I want it all, man. I want the full experience. So I'm sure Alatan can bring it.